I feel like that land is super loud. Party people, party people, come on in, come on in. Welcome, welcome. I hope your day has been wonderful. I hope you're ready to do some drumming tonight. I felt like some drumming. So uh, I hope you have your sticks. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Sometimes um, things go a little bit wonky over here on my end. Let me know how you guys are doing. <laughs> what's up? What's up? Nick, 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 Nick. What's up? What's up? It's been a minute. It has. It has. Hopefully I can do a little bit more um, <laughs> live streaming and things when I actually have time. So uh, how have you been, man? <laughs> Oh, man, I'm ready to play some drums. I, I've, I've had a long day. Been building a chicken coop out of all things. Um, so I'm just ready to drum. You know, it's been a it's been a good while since I've actually got a chance to to teach a whole lot in person. So I've been doing some private lessons and things. But mainly it's, um you know, I just want to play some drums and things. What's up? What's up? Marcos. Favorite band? Oh, do you mean like marching band or just like general band that plays pop music on the radio? What kind of stuff we're talking about here? Oh, the spinners. Okay, I see. Ha <laughs> ha. Kevin Donka, Donka drums. Go check them out. Go check them out. I'm ready to. I'm ready to do some jams. We're gonna start off kind of easy. Get my hands sort of moving. Um, I've been working hammers and drills and all of those types of things all day, so. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll start with some, with some simple things. I'm going to do a quick sound check here just to, uh, to make sure my, uh, audio tracks aren't too loud. So let me know. I'm going to play a little bit of jams here. Just so we can see, you can still hear me talking. Just making sure. Yeah, are we okay? Does that sound all right? Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. We're good. <laughs> awesome, 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 awesome. making sure my jams are good here. So, hey, basically we're gonna start off. Marcus with the sound quality. <laughs> That's always left up to, to debate. <laughs> and things, it's, uh, my, my hands are nowhere near what they used to be, especially being that I, pay, uh, I play mostly a drum set now, at least when I'm playing for, for money and things. So um, yeah, it's, it's very interesting to kind of see how some of the things go. Um, I actually might switch it over to this angle so we can see my devil's grip. We'll see. We'll see how that rolls for us. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Get your sticks. Let's let's roll. Let's roll. We're going to start off with some basic eighth notes here. We're going to jump into some doubles. We're going to do a little bit of some paradiddles, move that accent around, and then we're going to be jumping into some flam taps, possibly some rolls. We'll see where we'll see where some we'll see where some things go. Um, and whatnot. So let's 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 do it. Here it is, starting off with the eighth notes in the right hand. It's a beautiful day. Let's go. Um, two, um, 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 um. Staying on that right hand. This is the left hand. Just stretching it out, nice and even. Right hand. Um. Left hand, babe. Um, um. <laughs> Right hand, let's go. Uh. Left hand, let's go. Uh. Right hand, let's go. Uh. Left hand, jump. Uh. Both hands, double stops. Oh. Uh. 
double sixteenth notes. One. <laughs> Keeping those shoulders nice and relaxed. Yeah, yeah. Taking it down to a piano. Ah, ah. Relaxing those shoulders. Nice open doubles for me, baby. And into paradiddles. Ah, 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 ah. Keeping those last two notes nice and open. I believe in you. Let's go. One measure of paradiddles, one measure of doubles, pull out. Yeah, here it is. Paradiddle. Double. Paradiddle. Hey, hey, hey. Up. Double. Nice and relaxed. Paradiddle. Keeping those doubles nice and open. Let's go. Paradiddle. Double. Again. Paradiddle. Stay on the paradiddles. My loop is a little bit weird there, isn't it? Paradiddle. Here's the doubles. Double. Paradiddle. Double. <laughs> Paradiddle. Double. Let's go. Paradiddle. Double. We're going to be staying on the paradiddles. Paradiddle. Moving the accent to the second one. To the third one. On. To the fourth. On. Back to the first. Yeah. Moving it to the second one. Here it is. Oh. I did the 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 Yeah. Moving it to the third. On. to the four. Oh. First two. Stay on. Ha! 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 Just one accent. Oh. We're going to be going from one measure of the paradiddles to one measure of the roll. Nice open strokes, or as we call them, diddles. Here it is. Ready? And paradiddle. This is the roll. Uh. Paradiddle. This is the roll. Uh. Ha! Ha! Paradiddle. Let's go! Roll. Paradiddle. Oh! Roll. Paradiddle. We'll stay on the paradiddle till it come back around. Excuse my bad looping. Here's the paradiddles. Paradiddle. This is the roll. Paradiddle. Roll. Ah, ah, paradiddle. You got it. Roll. Paradiddle. Roll. Yeah. Paradiddle, give me a nice mezzo roll. Let's go. Paradiddle. Roll. Paradiddle. Roll. Paradiddle. I like it, babe. Roll. <laughs> Stay on the paradiddles. When we go back into it, we're going to do a forte roll. Here's the paradiddles. Paradiddle. This is the roll. Paradiddle. Roll. Paradiddle. Let's go. Roll. Paradiddle. Ah, ah, ah. Roll. Yeah. Paradiddle. Woo! 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 <laughs> paradiddle. Roll. Stay on the paradiddle. Uh. We're going to 
gonna be going into some flam taps, babe. Here it is. <laughs> Relaxing those hands, turning those wrists. Yeah. I'll give you guys a shot of the left hand that doubles grip. Crank it back, babe. Nice relaxed wrist turn. Do what you can do. Yeah. Bringing the, the flam uh, taps down. Still trying to keep them nice and open. Da 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 da. For me, I'm still having a nice kind of separation between my actual grace notes and my primary notes here. Some people choose to play those flat, but I choose to have a little bit of separation in mind. The true definition of a grace note, not a double stop, right? Just accent in the right hands there. Woo! Woo! Turn that wrist back. We're gonna be accenting the left hand. Here it is. Ah, 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 oh, no. Oh, oh. to the paradise. Oh. Um. Clam taps, baby. One measure of roll. Oh. Um. Three, four flam taps. Roll. Flam taps. Roll. We'll stay on the roll. We'll stay on the roll. We'll stay on that roll. We'll stay on that roll. We'll stay on that roll. Come on. 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 Eighth notes, right hand. Oh. Left hand. Oh. Right hand, stay on it. You wanna go into double stops, stretching them out. Ready, and on. I like it, babe. It's a beautiful day for music. <laughs> it's a wonderful day for sound. You know it. Ah. Stop right here. Two, one, and stop. Uh. Woo! Woo! <laughs> anyway, so just a few things about that particular progression that we just took there. <laughs> Thing number one is, of course, I'm looking to, to really kind of stretch out my hands. There were a few times that I got a little bit ahead of the actual beat. Um, Part of my warm-up process is making sure, yes, my actual physicality is warmed up, but then also my, uh, my mental perspective of how I view either the metronome or my mental perspective of how I actually view where the actual beat is, right? And I really wanna to try to get that honed in as soon as possible within uh, my playing process. And that goes for anything, me playing drum set, tambourine, timpani, rudimental snare drum. It's almost like I'm, I'm sort of uh, kind of calibrating my scope so that when I shoot, every single shot is right in the middle, excuse me, it's right in the middle of that bullseye and thing. So <laughs> that's part of the process. And of course, I wanna, I wanna sort of put out the same amount of energy that I'm gonna put out in my songs. I wanna have the same amount of accuracy, the same amount of relaxation, the same amount of technical control 
but also I want to I want to have the same amount of energy as if I'm in front of the 25,000 people, 35,000 people, you know, drum corps finals, WGI finals, whatever it is your biggest show is. Um, I want to make sure I'm putting out that kind of energy. I'm going to check out some of the comments here, see how you guys are doing. <laughs> Somebody asked me what my favorite band is. Um, I would have to say it's kind of a tie between Outkast and Goody Mob. I grew up in the South here in, um, in Georgia. And I definitely grew up in a time where um, the Dungeon family was important. And, um, and I, uh, even with my personal music, I highly still identify with, with the groups like that. Like in the live, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Do me a favor, just for the algorithm's sake, and, and hit the hit the like, 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 for me, for me, for me. It helps people find out about my page. There's still people um, who are out there who don't know that I do educational videos and things. I think um, there's plenty of people out there that have different slices of the internet within the percussion community, and my particular slice is is at least trying to do chop out videos and instructional videos. It's not the most popular thing out there ever, but um, I think it, it's useful and I think it's helpful for a lot of people. So that's why I continue to do it, even though it's not um, gonna get me millions of views. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> what kind of pad am I using? Oh man, oh man. Okay, so um, this is a Zymox. Ugh, you can tell it's been on this, on this drum for a little bit. This is a Zymox ID pad. Um, I'm not sure if you can actually tell. It's like super right in here. Yes, yeah, so Zymox ID pad, it has my name on here. It has the laminate um, on, on this side, the very thin laminate here. And then it has a little bit of the thicker rubber over here. I like playing on both sides. Um, there's some ethical issues behind it. I'm not gonna get into it. What I can say is I would probably get another pad. Um, if I were you, um, you can ask around about the actual company and about their shipping policies and all of that kind of stuff. But I don't want to hop into that too much. I would highly advise for you to check out some other type of drum pad. Any of them work as long as you get one and start making music and start drumming. That's what really counts. Love the energy I'm bringing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right hand brings the heat, but the left can't. What you really want to do in that kind of situation is you want to really make sure that you're starting on that left hand. You're, you're hitting up what I call 60-40. Some people even do 70-30 or whatever. So for every time I play like eights or something, I'll do like one measure on the right hand and I'll do two measures on the left hand. Or even when I'm doing something like pulsing, um, what I mean by pulsing, I, it's, it's almost like a wave. So uh, I'll turn off the Met sometimes and I'll be playing like eighth notes. Yeah. I'll, I'll kind of push the tempo slightly on my left hand or even just go up to the next, um, to the next rhythmic, um, I guess the next rhythmic uh, pattern. I don't know. So if I'm playing eighth notes, I'll go up to triplets on my left hand. Right. Uh, and, and I'll do that over and over again. So I'm just overcompensating for my inability to, to do that. Luckily for me, I am left handed. Right. So I actually kind of had the opposite problem. I had to sort of build uh, a hand that was very dominant for a lot of other people uh, and things kind of growing up. And even now, my left hand is, is a whole lot stronger, not necessarily in traditional because I mainly play matched most of the time and I mainly play um, I guess French grip <laughs> and things. Uh, but uh, even now, yeah, my left hand is pretty strong. My right hand's kind of messed up for some uh, very specific bad choices that I made when I was younger. So I can't do that kind of fast twitch motion. Um, I can still do it kind of in French grip because it deals primarily with my fingers, but I can't do uh, kind of fast twitch motion when it comes to just my wrist and keeping my arm relaxed. I have some tendon um, issues going on and things. Did I ever do a DCRWGI? Yeah, I marched a group called Spirit. It's uh, here in the South. I marched there in 2004, and I marched to Music City Mystique in 2005 and six and things. Um, I went to Jacksonville State University. It's in Alabama, and I was in the marching band there, and I did like their PASIC competition line and things. Loved my time there. Go check them out. 
he did DCA. Now I taught DCA, so I taught a, a DCA group called Alliance for a long time, and I was their caption head for two or three years there. Um, also, and then um, I taught another group here, uh, and I still show up a, a, a pretty good bit, at least once or twice in the season, um, here in Georgia called Atlanta CB. Super awesome group is headed up by Chris Romanowski. He's a super awesome dude. Um, so go check him out if you're in the area. He says, ah, gotcha. Yeah, never march DCA. How do I make my hands look so good? Don't worry necessarily about how your hands look. I would say um, take the opposite approach and worry about how you sound first and worry about your contrast of your rhythms and your consistency of your sound. And then if there's any blaring technical things that you have as far as controlling big notes to little notes or little notes to big notes or controlling a certain type of motion, then try to open up the hood to see, um, to see maybe what some of the problem is. Um, I didn't have a for real drum instructor of sorts until I got to college, but I was still offered numerous full scholarships with my messed up looking hands. And the thing that saved me was music. So I, I solely based everything that I was playing off of um, sound, right? And my hands looked crazy. That was literally the comment from every single real drummer that I saw, but they still heard the sounds I was making and, um, and that's the thing that convinced them. So sound first, always. Hashtag sound wins is what I always say. Andrew, what's up, what's up? Drew in the house. <laughs> Somebody said practice. <laughs> Wolf, what's up, what's up? Doing good? Make sure you guys go ahead and hit that like button. It helps the algorithm, gets the stuff out there. Plenty of folks who haven't uh, been able to, to see the love and whatnot. And things. I got some hand claps. Hello, hello. <laughs> bad hand choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very a whole lot of bad hand choices. <laughs> Marcus, what I do? Oh, as far as the bad hand choices, um, I it was just playing a very specific way, and uh, it was doing a whole lot of push-ups after, <laughs> after like chopping out, and it's, it's just a whole bunch of like tendon stretching things that shouldn't have happened, and not a whole lot of warming down. Um, mixed with a lot of basketball playing and doing construction work when I was younger um, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's, it was difficult. <laughs> My palm is so big, is it? I didn't, I'm not sure if, um, if my hands are any bigger than anybody else's. I do have um, fairly long fingers, but I'm not sure about my palms. I guess you would never want to get slapped by me, right? <laughs> I haven't seen a drummer focus on French get much. It's not just endless as timpani. Yeah, um, I would technically consider most of my um, professional playing work to be on drum set. So, um, and and I uh, for drum set that I use a whole lot of fingers, um, some wrists. But then when I need bigger motion, it turns into arm stuff and things. There's plenty of YouTube channels that are educationally focused on drum set playing and things. So um, I don't do a whole lot of that on my channel. I do have maybe two or three foundational videos that I did maybe two years back or so. But um, for the most part is rudiment uh, focused. I should make a video. Uh, oh, triple a grid in the 16th note feel. Maybe, I mean, I don't know. That's... um. I feel like that's something that most people can sort of figure out. Like there's no real secret sauce there than to just kind of sit down and to do it, right? Um, are there any questions you have about it? Like, are there any problems? Lana CV was sick. Oh yeah. Saw them at DCA finals. Yeah, those dudes are really good. Um, they they always bring in some, some really good players. They have top-notch teachers. If you're in the area, definitely hit them up. Tell Romo, I sent you. Love my teaching style. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. Is the marching band scene big here? Yeah, it's huge in Georgia. Um, probably not as huge as <laughs> maybe like Texas or something, uh, Indiana maybe. But yeah, it's, it's very competitive. Obviously, most groups here have kind of shut down, sort of doing like a pep band type of situation because of the, of the virus. But... Um, 
yeah, there's a lot of groups who uh, compete a pretty good amount. And then there's some select groups that compete regionally in Bands of America. And then maybe two or three groups that'll, that'll kind of, you know, every, every few years make the trip up to Grand Nats. Ooh, somebody says do a molar exercise. Fixed in triplets on the loop, possibly. Play a left flam five. What? Invites for what to do. I would say if, if you're always looking to improve, um, you're you're not necessarily looking to improve your your physical capability because for most people the reason why they can't get to the level that they want to is not because of that. It's because their mental perception of how they hear rhythms and their mental perception of how they interpret things from the beginning without having somebody else interpret them for you. Um, I would say that's that's some of the biggest stuff. Like it's real easy to get the sheet music for like Blue Devils 20, uh, 2019 and play with them eventually um, uh, in their finals a lot. But if you were to just get that music without hearing them playing it perfectly and you had to hear it and play it perfectly yourself, that's kind of a, a totally different story for a whole lot of people. So um, just being able to look at music, seeing what the tendencies are, hearing the quality and the consistency in your head, and then making that happen within yourself um, before somebody else tells you what those things are, um, that's super, super important. So hopefully um, you can work on the, the mental side um, of drumming, once again, sound first. Y'all got Spirit of Atlanta. Yep, I marked Spirit of Atlanta. Technically, they were out of JSU then, so they were housed in Alabama. But yes, it's the same group. It's almost like set players get too much help. Sometimes, I mean, from an academic standpoint, there's not a whole lot of education, especially in the younger levels. For a drum set, even though that's a lifelong instrument, um, it's something that can make you money from, from when you're super young all the way into your old. And of course, it's something that you can get together and play with people in a, in a community setting um, for your whole life um, for whatever reason, um, probably because there's not like a competitive aspect to it, I guess, outside of like the guitar center drum offs and things like that. Um, there's just not a whole lot of education on that front. So there needs to be, I would say, even more education on, on YouTube and things. Thank you for all those you do. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mason, um, I love your vids, energy, how do you start? How do I start with traditional grip? Yeah, we can talk about that in a second. Any tips on transitioning some like flam taps or something like flam accents? We can talk about that in a second. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, when it comes to, uh, I guess, Shonda, when it comes to learning some of the basics, um, the, the internet is amazing, right? And you have that. So um, go through and just try to learn one thing at a time. It will take time, take it slow, focus on quality over speed, and I think, I think you'll be okay. Um, as far as the the idea of first learning how to do traditional grip, I'll, I'll do kind of the quick version here. Um, and, and I'll give you kind of a few kind of pointers along the way. I'm gonna start with my hand kind of in a, in a hand shaking position here. Um, what I wanna do is make sure, if you can see here, that um, the bottom part of my hand is fairly flat, right? I don't want it to be kind of down and I don't also want it to be up sort of unnaturally. I want to start with my arm feeling like it's sort of hanging down, like it's, it's kind of like weight or gravity. And I want this to kind of be like at a 90 degree angle or slightly lower. Um, and then I want to make sure that I'm actually touching here my thumb to the first joint of this, uh, of this finger here. If you can see that, the first joint, so my thumb. For me, you'll notice that I have kind of a hitchhiker's thumb, so I do choose to overlap um the, the 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 front part of my thumb here it just gives me a, a slightly different access 
to these muscles back here in the back. I like to call it the hand butt. So it gives me a slightly different access to those muscles. Some people do have it fairly even here. I've seen both preferences, but definitely try out a few different things to see what works for you um, and things. Once again, at the end of the day, uh, it's the sound that matters and things. And then what I would do here to make that connection is I would put my stick in and I would just kind of have the bead hanging out on the actual drum here, right? Notice that my angle is an up angle. So I'm not 90 degrees, if you can see that. I'm not sure if you can. So I'm not um, like this. You see how that's making a, a square here? It's slightly up from that. So that's, that's the, the angle in relation to that. And at least for me right now, there's a slight downward angle because the actual tip is resting on the actual pad, if that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and close those first two fingers here and just kind of feel that connection. Um, when you first start off, it's gonna be sliding back and forth everywhere. It's totally fine um, for that to happen. You'll start to get a little bit more control, especially towards the back part of the stick here. And you'll be able to, to kind of feel that muscle squeezing on there. After that, I'm gonna wrap this sort of middle finger here lightly around the top. I like to call it Daddy C, like the letter C. <laughs> and then um, I'm gonna wrap sort of the, the next finger here underneath there. And it's gonna kind of be resting um, on my cuticle. <laughs> I say fingernail, cuticle, whichever one. It's just gonna be in the front. It's not gonna necessarily be kind of in the back. You'll see a lot of like jazz drummers sort of do that. Where the, where, the, where the palm is kind of turned over and things. Um, at least for marching drums, we like to keep our hands on top of the stick. It just gives us a little bit more access to our muscles and a little bit more power. So that's why it's gonna be resting kind of on that, on that finger here on the first part and things. And then, so that's kind of mama, mama C. And, uh, and then I have little baby C. And my baby C here is kind of um, lightly sort of tucked in I'm not sure if you can, I'll see if I can sort of turn it here. It's slightly tucked in. Uh, what's gonna end up happening for you is it's gonna sort of go, it's gonna kind of hide underneath mama for a little bit until you get a little bit of control and your stick's gonna start to kind of slip over here a whole lot. Like you're, it's gonna come off of that cuticle fingernail thing. So um, you're gonna get totally used to it though um, as, you, as you continue along in your drumming, in your drumming path. Um, you're gonna feel the need to try to like turn your hand back as far as possible when you're playing things. I wouldn't worry about that too much in the beginning. You can start off nice and comfortable as long as you're getting a good wrist turn. And for me, it really helped for me to kind of rest my, my arm on my leg. So I'm really just focusing, I'm really just focusing on my wrist at first keeping my bottom fingers close to the stick, but they're not really doing anything, especially if I'm playing something like regular eighth notes. So they're nice and relaxed. They're just along for the ride. And then mainly it's that top portion that's just kind of sending that stick back down nice and relaxed. And sometimes what I'll do in order to check myself that there's not too much bottom pressure coming from the bottom part of my hand is I'll kind of kick those out here and nothing should change in my sound or my motion. Does that make sense? Now, the next step is I wanna, hopefully you're getting all of this. I'm going through it like super quick, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but the next step for me is I'm gonna start to just pick my hand up off of my leg to let my arm have a little bit more freedom and a little bit more hanging ability when I'm actually playing. So I'm going from this, just to taking it off of there. I don't have to like lift it up. I don't need a whole lot of tension in my shoulder here. It's just hanging down. It just happens to not be resting on my leg here. And once again, I'm gonna do that whole kicking out thing of my bottom fingers and then bringing it back in. Hopefully that, that'll give you kind of a good starting point um, as far as where you're going. Let me know if that helped you out. Uh, and for the rest of you, by the way, um, 
I know a lot of you are, are already experienced players. A lot of you are already kind of, you know, on your second and third and fourth and fifth level of traditional grip rudimental playing and things, but you can use that as kind of a starting point of the way that you would introduce that to maybe some of the younger players that you have contact with. Oh, there's a whole lot of questions. Awesome. So um, I, uh, let me address the one when it said something like um, flam taps going into flam accents. What I would definitely do is uh, approach it from two different ways, technically three different ways, right? Way number one is the most obvious one, which is just take it slow and find out what, what specific motions your hands are doing, right? So those flam taps... And, and that'll kind of allow for you to see exactly what types of strokes, whether you're going to be rebounding those strokes or whether the actual strokes are going to go down like a staccato stroke. I normally call it a down stroke um, in order for me just to have the idea of keeping my hands relaxed and open when I'm playing those. So the next way, I would say um, just a purely kind of rhythmic focused way is I would play all of them at a general flattened out height. So I would play it kind of at a mezzo forte-ish and not have a whole lot of contrast. And, uh, and what I'm doing here is I'm focusing on the rhythm. Even when I switch back from, from the other one. So... Right, so notice it's, there's not a whole lot of contrast in between like the little beautiful grace note and that pop of an accent mm, explosion in your mouth. It's not that, um, it's not that contrasty. However, um, it allows for me to focus just on that kind of droning hum, that do 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 It really allows for me to do that. The third way is just to figure out your hand independence, right? Right? And as you get a little bit faster with it, as you go over to your left hand, you'll start to notice areas that you're maybe squeezing that you don't need to squeeze. You'll start to notice areas that you're probably trying to play like those little three notes with like maybe your arm and it should happen with a smaller muscle grouping like your wrist or even when you get faster, like the front part of your hand or maybe your fingers. Same thing on that left hand. You'll start to notice different tendencies about that when you actually separate it. And, uh, and, it, and it'll take a good, like what I say, um, a meditative amount of time to where I'm playing it and then I'll take one hand off and I kind of zoom into that and then I'll add both hands, but I'm still zoomed into that right hand. What I mean zoomed in is like with my ears, right? My attention is zoomed into that specific sound quality and that specific side and I'll zoom back out and hear all of it. I might go back to that second version where I'm just playing all of it flat so I can hear and just check the pure quality of that even rhythm. And then I'll go back and add that contrast back in and then play the accents with my left hand, just take away the right hand, listen to that, see if there's any tension in my body, really listen for the quality of those small notes. They really, really matter. Um, and then try to put it back together and then do the whole thing five clicks faster or four clicks faster and so on and so forth. Hopefully that helped. <laughs> Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Also, concert band. Yeah, concert band is super important. I know it's, it's kind of boring for a lot of people, but I think it forces people to play simple things, hopefully. Um, even, if you're, even if your instructor or your band director isn't like always on you, it forces you to try to play simple things with immaculate quality. And I think um, that's one of the things that sometimes we lose, especially within the marching arts, you'll have a whole lot of people playing a whole lot of choppy things and a lot of impressive things, but all of it is at 40% quality. Woo! Um, <laughs> and it kind of goes by too fast for them to hear it, and then they'll get in concert band, and they're like, this is really easy. I can play all of this. But then somebody like me will come in, and I'm like, this is doo-doo cakes, <laughs> right? Because they, they can't even hear 
the fluctuation of their sound or that they're closing down notes or that their pressure of their hands are changing or maybe the end and the beginning of that buzz roll has a different sound shape or texture. So I really encourage you, even if nobody's forcing you to like really dig in and pay attention, um, really try to listen across the ensemble and compare sounds and timbres and how does that relate to you and all of those things, even if your personal instruction at your school isn't top notch, you can have top notch ears and you can make top notch decisions because you're a wonderful musician. Yeah. Any tips for somebody auditioning for snare? Play rhythms. Rhythms in time will always get you the spot. Rhythms in time will always get you the spot. Your hands can look crazy. Rhythms in time will always get you the spot. I have to say that over and over. Love learning DCI music. Uh-huh. There you go, Swan Smiley. Nice, nice. Yeah, breaking it down always really, really works. Let's figure out how to mentally process something. Oh, man. I think my little, um, I think my comments like jumped up a crazy amount. Yeah, quality of low height most definitely. Any marching tenors in the house? I actually have a set of marching tenors here. Um, <laughs> I don't play them a whole lot. They're just big and, it, and it's kind of difficult to fit in my studio. I have my green screen on the other side over here. I have my drum set and I, I leave it set up um, for when I do like remote sessions and I record for other people and things. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm always struggling with a place to kind of put them most likely at some point, like right over here beside me, there's going to be like a marimba or a xylophone fairly, uh, fairly soon. So I'll have to see if I have room. <laughs> What's my favorite book? Um, Andrew, are you talking about like a drumming book or a book in general? <laughs> Thanks. Might be teaching drumline at school next year. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Um, if you are... Uh, sort of entering your teaching, um, there's two bits of advice that I want to give you. Uh, a bit of advice number one is um, check out my learn this lick. You don't even have to learn the lick. Um, just check out the way that I'm teaching the lick. I think that's kind of a good starting off point for a lot of people who want to get into teaching. It's one of the reasons that I actually put it out there is to not only train players, but to train teachers how to break down licks for their students and things. But then number two, is um, the best thing as a teacher that you can do is know who you are, right? Most likely you've had teachers who are inspirational. Most likely you've had very skilled teachers along the way, but know that your personality is different from them, which means that your teaching style is going to be different from them. What's going to make you a good teacher is your ability to expound and facilitate the information to your students. Um, don't try to take on the personality of your favorite teacher. You are not them, <laughs> right? So it's about the information and you being you giving that information. It took me years and years to figure that out. This is my personality. I, I used to come in and try to be like the tough drum guy. Like everybody push ups right now, like yelling and stuff. But that's not me. It's, it's not successful for who I am. It's not successful for my style of teaching. Um, I put forward a lot of um, just ways to get better. And, and I'm an encourager and it's who I am. So that might not be you. Your personality is not like mine. So jump in there, figure out who you are and, uh, and, and, and progress in that way. Awesome. 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 Thank you. Nobody, nobody. What's up? <laughs> Can pass, should I get I actually don't know. As my biggest thing with tenor pads is just making sure that they don't have a lot of what I call drag on them. So like you don't want them to be sort of rubbery and things. When you get into stuff like your sweeps and things, you definitely want some form of laminate or some sort of um, uh, you don't you don't want there to be a whole lot of stickiness to the heads, right? Um, so when you're when you're doing your side to side motions, your in and out scrapes and things like that. Um, that's it. It really feels very different than a set of real tenors if your pad happens to have that. <laughs> Somebody said, "Don't get Zymox." Told you. 
Somebody said he should get a uh, big first. Uh, I am slightly, I guess, biased on that because I, I am, um, I do endorse Vic first. Um, they're a great company. Um, pretty much every other company out there is awesome too. As long as you get something and go for it, right? Just get something and, and get better. That's what it is. Offward, uh, off world shreds too quick. I have seen that, especially for people who are in hotter climates, apparently. Mm. I do get that point. If somebody says that it'll teach you how to really stroke out your notes as opposed to relying on rebound, it just really depends on what kind of practice you're, you're trying to have. Um, some people like to have a chop out pad and then they like to have a realistic pad so they can actually work on their touch and their smoothness and things. So, um, yeah, I mean, if, if you have the ability to do both, then then that's awesome, most definitely. Struggle with the four stroke rough, the drag period or any tips on speed. Yeah, we can talk about that in a second. Any book in, in general, Andrew? Um, hmm. Uh, I think for uh, human perspective, um, I think The Art of War is a, is a very good book. I think The 48 Laws of Power is a very good book um, to understand um, some of those things. Uh, this is going to sound like a weird answer, but I think um, the Bible is a really good book. <laughs> I'm not necessarily a believer of the Bible, but I do uh, highly identify with the, the character and the person of Jesus and things. So um, I'm not a Christian per se, but um, I do think it's a really good book and has some very good things in there. Um, I've seen a lot of your lip learning. They're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sick Control, the book, the best ever, best book ever in general. Oh, yeah. Stick Control, if you guys don't have Stick Control, it's by Stone. Um, I'm pretty sure it's still in publication, but you can just check out the PDFs. Once you've kind of seen what the patterns are, um, there's not a whole lot of words in the book, but definitely check it out. If you do want to take it further, get his uh, second book. It's called Accents and Rebounds. It's by Stone, Accents and Rebounds. It's a super, super good book. Huh, I'm not familiar with that book. Um, you said Frogs, the really old one? I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> Lick three is the best. I actually don't really remember any of my licks. So sometimes when people ask me questions about them, I actually have to go back and watch the video to learn it myself. <laughs> is that bad? I don't really ever remember any of the um, the stuff that I write for marching bands or whatever either. So that's, um, that's weird. Even with my... Um, with my personal album, um, my artist name is Morning Hawk. If you like hip hop, go check it out. Uh, and things you can stream it on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you stream things. Um, I don't, I don't even remember like my own songs. <laughs> I have to like find the lyrics written down somewhere and things. So yeah, go check it out, Morning Hawk. Play the Diddy. I used to be able to play Diddy. We played it in college all the time. But I, I need to work it back up. I've been sort of contemplating teaching sort of drum standards. My only thing with that, uh, my ethical dilemma, is that the person who wrote that, I would, I would want to get permission from that person to teach it. Because I know a lot of these people who write these um, warm-ups and exercises and cool lot tunes and things, they're still teaching private lessons. They're still trying to sell their music somewhere online. So um, I don't ever want to be in a situation where I'm just teaching it to everybody for free and they're still out there trying to make money off of their off of their intellectual um, content. Right. The stuff that they've made. So um, I, I would need to check with I, I think it's David. Yeah. David Glyde, who wrote Diddy. Um, but then it was revised by other people kind of throughout the years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All four snare pads. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> the Bible gang. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if we should call it a gang. <laughs> Vin Win, what's up, baby? Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> I marched with Vin back in the day at, at Jacksonville State University. He's awesome. Vin, I watch your, um, I, I look at your, <laughs> 
I, I stalk your family on Facebook all the time. You have the cutest kids and family. <laughs> a lot of great advice. Cool, cool, cool. Gotta love percussion live stream. That has two camera angles. I do. Boom. Boom. Oh, wait. My second angle. What happened? Something's weird. What happened to me? Oh, there it goes. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. I think I'm like stepping on one of the cables. So it's it's weird over there. Yeah, it's weird over there. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. <laughs> uh, I think I got lost in my comment. So it's about time in general. Cool, cool, cool. Concert versus marching. Uh, what do you mean by concert versus marching? Like, what are you? What sort of comparisons are you looking for? Someone books that will help me get better and make audition. Uh, the, the thing about it is most most books have good exercises, even the ones that you probably had in like middle school or whatever. The problem is, is that people don't ever master those um, those exercises and they don't actually ever master the basic thing. So where they can play the notes, they're not playing it um, with rhythmic accuracy and where they can play the notes, but they're not playing it with some form of consistent, beautiful, open tonality. So what I would say for anybody who's looking for some new special book or some new special technique or something is don't <laughs> just try to play the things you can with the most relaxation the most even sound and really like cut off the lights close your eyes turn your met down and try to just play right in the center of the beat and try to be the most consistent with your sound quality that you possibly can and that'll 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 get you um, a whole lot of places Oh, the how and why of mechanical movements. I don't think I've heard of that book, um, but I'll have to check it out. I um, Most of the books that I'll read are, are of not necessarily a technical, um, uh, I guess a technical level, but they're theoretical in nature. So I guess political theory, um, books about, I guess, the nature of humanity and books about, I don't know, I self self help books. <laughs> I still do read a, a pretty good amount of, um, I guess, theology books. Once upon a time, I studied apologetics um, and hermeneutics and things, but uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> it would be impossible to be upset. I don't know. It happens for some people. You can ask uh, any of my students, I guess. They can tell you the truth or my family. There's people hanging out out there. I'm sure that, that have seen me angry before. Favorite odd time signature. I have some songs on my personal album that are in five and in seven. So I really like those. I haven't ever written anything in 11 yet. So maybe I'll hit that up. Eighth grade drummer. Indiana, I'm wondering if I could be. Indoor percussion show. I don't know. See, uh, live reactions, I feel like maybe that's other people's genres. First of all, it would be difficult for me to give real information on um, over the internet. Let me say it like that. Besides just me saying, oh, that's awesome. Oh, you guys are so good. Great job. Those kind of things do get a lot of views, but I'm not sure if there's any educational value in there. Um, the educational value is... I guess for those you could say is inspiration, which is always awesome. But for the kind of educational material that I do, that might not be something that um, that I would need to do for my page. Also, if I didn't like a part, it's not my job to tell the world. It's my job to contact the people who designed and writ and wrote and and taught your show um, to talk to them. I don't need to tell the internet that a part's not working or something needs to change after the fact. Um, that's that's not my place. Uh, <laughs> Oklahoma, Oklahoma, cool, cool, cool. Appreciate it. Love the camera angles. What is my setup? Uh, first of all, I do own a media company. 
that's the other thing I do. So obviously I teach and play drums and things. Um, but uh, yeah, I own a media company and I do uh, live events and stuff. So this is uh, an ATM Mini uh, Pro switcher. So I can switch between four cameras if I want to. Um, I use it to run live events. I have lights in here. I'm using a NTG3 microphone by Rode. I use Lumix cameras as Panasonic. Um, I have a sound devices mix pre three for my sound. If you have any other technical questions, hit me up. I'll give you the whole rundown. Um, all of my music I have um, running on logic on my computer and I'm triggering it with my phone. I have logic remote on my phone here so I can start it and stop it and things. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it seems a little bit, um, a little bit much, but it's, you know, it's not that much. Bully busting mixer <laughs> says, hey, what's up, what's up? Options on OHQ real fill. Oh, opinions on it. I love those. I had the same, you know, throughout my whole high school and half of my college, um, I had the same one drum pad. I guess it's kind of cool, especially if you have money or if you have like the means now to have multiple drum pads and for that to be a thing for you. But um, for me, I didn't have a whole lot of money. <laughs> so uh, I really only had one drum pad for the longest. And, um, and even when I guess I started collecting drum pads, most of them were just kind of given to me by former students or something like that, or as presents uh, and things uh, later on. And I've given most of those away for a lot of the students that I've had to teach over the years that are um, less privileged. So even now I own one pad. My daughter is in middle school, she's 12, and she has a drum pad that I'll use sometimes. Um, I don't even know, I forgot what kind it was. I think it's like a regular HQ kind of gray pad and things. So yeah, we literally have two drum pads in this house. <laughs> uh, you would think there would be like a whole lot of them and things, but no, it's not. <laughs> X marks the spot, yeah. You have a small indoor group. It's not really about the size. I've seen some really small groups um, have immaculate sounds and play together really well. Martin Music, 442434. Yeah, so when you're talking about um, keeping time, definitely keep your feet moving. What I would do um, first is just count through the measure. So one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, that type of thing. And then keep your feet moving. So play the floor drum. Thing number two is when you're reading through your music, force yourself to still move your feet, but then also while you're singing through the rhythms, always say the rhythms, always say the rhythms, always say the rhythm. Yeah. So while you're actually saying through the rhythms, force yourself to do the fingers, right? So right? So I was still doing four, two, three kind of idea. I was still moving my feet and then I was actually singing through the parts. So that's a good way to kind of bridge it um, before you ever pick up your sticks. And then hopefully you'll have a little bit of a better time at it. Of, of course, by the way, I would do that a whole lot slower. So don't, you don't have to do it that fast. <laughs> Hola, como estas? <laughs> uh, March Revolution, Revela Revelation. Awesome, cool, cool, cool. Banished Beyond Lion King Lick. I did learn it when it came out. Um, it's really cool. I, I love that dude's videos, man. If you guys haven't ever seen any of the, the classic Banished Beyond, Banished Beyond. If you haven't ever seen that, um, definitely, definitely check it out. What state do I live in? I'm in Georgia, um, slightly north of Atlanta, so I live in Cobb County. Would you rather see a world-class group with five snares or nine snares all of the instrumentation? Um, standard. For me, since I just like shows in general, um, it, the amount of snares really don't matter. From a judging standpoint, it is harder to get 
more snare drums clean. So you will see sometimes groups that'll that'll show up with nine and ten snare drums um, get, I guess, extra consideration because it's hard to clean that many people. As a, an enjoyer of music and sound, um, whether you have, you know. 10 violins or 20 violins, as long as it sounds awesome, you know? So that's the same way I look at snare drum. I do appreciate it as a snare drummer for that to be that many people. Um, I've taught a, a group called Atlanta Quest for years and years and years. I'm more so just kind of a bystander at this point, um, just because of time constraints. But uh, in 2014, I was there full time um, and we had 10 snare drums and it was, uh, it was difficult, it was very difficult but by the end, we, we ended up sounding fairly decent and things, but um, but people were very impressed that there was that many people and we sound that way. And I can get it because of this, the sheer number of things. Um, so I can I can see how that uh, conversation has merit from a, from a judging standpoint, but just from me enjoying a show, it's never ruined a show for me if somebody had two less snare drums than somebody else, if that makes sense. I want to see you learn DCI parts specifically to pronounce them <laughs> instead of playing them. Yeah, I sing everything. Uh, and for me, it comes from two different traditions. Tradition number one, since I grew up with hip hop music, is just beatboxing. I always grew up beatboxing and, and singing beats or whatever while people freestyled. And, and of course, tradition number two, which I got to way, way later on, is the top of the tradition of uh, Eastern India, where you are expected to say the parts and sing the parts before you ever touch the drum. It's just a part of the tradition. And I I still think they are the most rhythmic ninjas out in, in the whole world. Um, the way that they hear sound, the way that they hear uh, space and time signatures is way more advanced than most people in the Western world, including the best of snare drummers. It's very difficult stuff. Really appreciate the help. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What's my favorite rudiment? Um, I would say there it, it's a hybrid rudiment called I don't knows, right? And it's um, hmm, you have a, a right left cheese, yes, right tap, and then right double, and the same thing off of the left hand, left right cheese, left double. So technically it's based off of like a paradiddle. Uh, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. If that makes any sense. So yeah, at least I've heard them call I don't knows. I'm not sure if anybody calls those anything different. Somebody says the book report, awesome, awesome. Hmm. I don't know what you mean by what does the lineup mean? Hybrid rudiment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice Atlanta Quest. Oh, you like the Questy Questies, the home teams here? The balloons hybrid rudiment. Oh, I don't think I know what that is. Enlighten me. Enlighten me, Drew Drew. Love book reports too. Yeah, I love book reports. Paul Slibitz, I think that's his name, the guy who came up with book reports. He was a Santa Clara guy back in the day. I think he marked Blue Devils too. I don't know. Steel here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Chandra, did I answer your question, by the way? Just making sure. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Lincoln. <laughs> Somebody just said, ah. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. ever thought of getting into, I don't know what that word is. Uh, Thomas, please explain what that is. Mine is triplet, just regular triplet, cool. Cool rudiment, what am I gonna name it? Oh, um, that's not my rudiment. I didn't come up with that. So somebody showed me that years and years ago. Uh, that business. It's in one of my, um, well, I don't know. I don't want to speak. I don't want to speak too soon. 
I, I thought it was probably in one of my learn this licks, but it might not be. I don't know. I need to look through them. How do you practice for marching quests or equinox? Really, it's it's for anywhere. You need to you need to prepare um, any music with the the goal and the idea of mastery, right? So whether you're auditioning for the Boston Symphony or you're auditioning to be Beyonce's drum set player or you're auditioning for Quest to the Cavaliers or Music City Mystique, whoop, 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 or any of those types of groups, um, the idea is that you show up as if you're going to be the section leader. That's how well you need to prepare. That's how well you need to be confident in the evenness of your sound and in, uh, in the absolute um, mathematical ability of your rhythms and then be open-minded to go with their interpretation if it happens to be different uh, and that'll put you in a in a good place right oh somebody said yeah it, it really just depends on the year and on the group as far as how people line up their their their, their places and things um and that's very personal to like the snare tech and the specific kinds of players that you have in the group. I was very lucky um, that the places that I marched, um, they they had very different philosophies on how they lined people up uh, and things. So some people will just go straight up like best player, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, for some people, it gets a little bit shaky because you don't necessarily want um, not necessarily the worst player. When you get to a certain level, there's no worst player per se. But um, you want people closest to the center of pulse who might have some maybe some technical issues or something like that. So um, sometimes it's a marching issue. You do want people with long legs on the outside of that snare line so they can shoot around those pinwheels and things of that nature. I know it was definitely a consideration um, especially my second year at MCM, um, they they really liked the way that I could push um, and and keep control of my hands and things. So I don't know. It really depends on the specific group, and and I'm pretty sure they have a lot of considerations of why they make those. A lot of times, unfortunately, um, younger players aren't able to hear the reasoning of why people are putting them certain places and understand it in the moment. Um, it's a very difficult thing for people to hear the reason why they're put in certain places because everybody thinks that they're better than what they are, unfortunately. <laughs> Play the third lick video that I made. I don't remember any of them. I would have to like literally look it up right now. learned it in like 15 minutes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I try to make the licks super, super um, easy and short so you can potentially just watch the video and then come out able to play it. That's why they're so short. That's why a lot of them kind of focus on like one kind of common theme and things. So um, yeah, it's good that you learned it in that amount of time. I would say that's about normal and things, but really make sure that once again, the quality and the rhythms are just there. Um, yep, yep, yep. Uh, like the Indian rhythmic singing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the singing that um, and the syllables that are very um, that, that go along with tabla drumming. Now, I've, I've taken a few uh, tabla classes and workshops and things, but I am like level one when it comes to that particular type of music. And I've had like little 12 year old kids who grew up in that tradition who will look at me and laugh. And I'm like, trying to figure out how 11 fits in the cycle of 13 and how they're counting three inside of that cycle. And when it comes back around and that kid is just like laughing, and I'm like, what are we doing? I'm just lost and things. So if you ever um, get a chance to, to take a, a class um, with tabla or anything dealing with Eastern um, uh, music from India, then definitely do that. The best player is in the. Yeah, 
Um, and, and that really depends on the on the group also. There, there are plenty of places that they'll still choose to put um, the strongest leader in the middle, not necessarily the strongest player because it's not always the same person, right? Um, because leadership, of course, um, has multiple other parameters um, involved in it, like your clout with your peers, your ability to defuse situations, your ability to inspire the people around you. And not everybody has that. Even the best of players can't look to people and say, hey, let's do this, let's go. Um, and, and, uh, and other people are like on board with them. So sometimes people will choose to put a different type of person in the middle and then maybe have a stronger person beside them so that that person can still have a good representation of, of what things should sound like. Cavaliers 11, love them. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I mean, what did, was there a question? I love them. They were awesome. <laughs> Does the name Aaron Watson sound familiar? I know about Watson. Who knows Watson in here? Is that you, Watson? <laughs> um, he's, a, he's an awesome player. If you happen to know him, tell him I said, what's up? <laughs> Do do you want to make love to the drum? Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I love music, and uh, and that is a form of self-expression. <laughs> Whenever I have self-esteem issues, uh, it comes to my skill. I'll do a six to the entire. And I feel way better. Yeah, music is definitely an outlet. I know it definitely was for me. Um, super, super cool. Do I like United Percussion? They are awesome. Who Coach had a different scenario between a year, I think. Uh, that's a great idea. Um, they didn't do it on purpose. Like they didn't come in with the idea of just switching centers. So if that happened to be the case, it wasn't by design. Howdy, what's up, what's up? Um, there's a whole lot of letters there, so I can't pronounce your name. <laughs> I take free lessons from Aaron. Awesome, yeah, that most definitely. Then Aaron, Aaron is 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 uh, was an awesome student when I had him, um, when he was in high school, and even after that. And um, he's he's a he's a very good drummer, and he's a super cool dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell him I said hey. <laughs> and he say, oh, I see. Awesome, awesome. Cool. Hey, well, uh, if you guys sort of uh, liked the stream and things. I did actually plan on playing some more, but um, there are a whole lot of questions, which I did want to answer your questions. Once again, I just want to provide value for you guys because there's plenty of, of playing videos um, out there and things. Um, what I'll probably end up doing is going live at some other point. I do have like five or six songs and chop outs and things that you guys technically haven't heard. I might um, try to film maybe some more. Um, coming up here but as always my things are real busy and the things that make money come first so uh i always have to be super aware of that speaking of things that make money um if you guys do want to help support the page go check out my patreon links in the description you can buy a shirt from teespring whoop, 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 all of that jam you can drop me a few bucks in my cash app times are super crazy for musicians uh and things but i still want to provide value for you guys and it's always my model that I provide the value before I get compensation. So that's the way I work uh, and things. Anyways, um, with that being said, hopefully you guys like the jam. Tell your friends, tell your friends, and I'll see you guys in the in the next stream. Woo, woo, woo.